Now let's talk about the wiring that drives the motor. The wires come from the motor and they come up through this shaft and what I found when I took this head unit off was that these wires are potted in this shaft so that if you look down inside of this tube about right here there is like a slug of either rubber or epoxy and then below that this shaft is is full so if you get water up into the top of the shaft it can't get down into the motor i uh put uh connectors um on the the uh the red and the black wires that go to the motor itself and then um put a matching connector on this side and these are two of the 10 gauge conductors two of the three that run through this heavy duty cable um, and i use this cable because if I did, then it would not require any kind of um, uh, protective cover or sleeving or anything like that. This is tough and it's flexible and it's going to stand up. Um, and on this end, this cable is, is strain relieved right here at this plate with a clamp. So it's free to move down here, but, but right here it's locked down. And then this cable goes up through a hole that's bored in this block that very closely matches the outer diameter of this cable. Um, I really had to shove this to get it up inside. You can, I can rotate this if I have to, but it's going to be very difficult for water to get up inside here into a housing that I'm going to put up on top of here to cover this connector. Um, that housing is probably going to have some sort of a gasket on it so that this thing is completely protected if I would ever flip upside down or if it rains. The intent is to make this waterproof. Uh, it's not there yet, but that's coming. Um, and I'll probably end up using some RTV or something to um, seal this and make it an even tighter seal around that cable where it goes through the block. But then that cable um, comes down and runs down to the um, trolling plug connector that goes into the kayak. Um, and this is a nice, this boot fits really tightly onto the outer jacket of the, the cable. So this is a watertight connection and this trolling plug, um, it has an O-ring seal on it. It's a twist lock and it has an O-ring seal on it. So that's a water, waterproof connection as well. Um, and I put that in here so that it, when this cable lays, it tends to want to twist the connector and tighten it rather than untwist the connector and make it come loose. Um, and then the length of this cable between the connector and the strain relief was very carefully selected so that when you rotate the motor between its two extremes, the cable behaves very nicely. So it doesn't pull, doesn't bind, It doesn't rub, it's not going to abrade. I think that this is a sleeker look with the cable coming down out of this connection area, down, down around and into the kayak here, than um, having it come up to an elbow and having a big cable that comes down and up. Um, I just, for some reason, I just thought that this looked better, um, so that's why I did it that way. My battery that drives the motor lives inside my front hatch right in this area. Um, it turns out that these little grooves, these ribs here that are in the kayak are perfectly spaced so that my battery turned sideways will sit right between these two grooves and slide right down inside right up to the vertical wall of this um, scupper that's here. And then I have a strap that I use to strap that battery against that wall to keep it secure. And then I'm able to plug in my battery cable. Um, and this little plastic bracket holds the connectors up off the floor so that if I was ever to get a little bit of water in here, um, it wouldn't swamp the electrical connection. To install my battery, I drop it down inside. I turn it sideways and it sits right real nice in those grooves. It slides forward and then I pull my strap out and around the battery and then I can strap it in place like that 
That battery is completely secure now. It can't go anywhere. It can't go down. It can't go from side to side. It can't go forward or back. Um, right now, it could, if I flipped up side down completely, it could go up and hit the top of the kayak. Um, but I'm going to end up putting some kind of a padding or a, sh uh, or a watertight shield on the top of the battery that will brace against the top of the inside of the kayak to prevent that from happening. Right now, so that's right now, that's an area of improvement that I'm going to work on. For now, it's fishable, um, but not 100% secure. Um, and so I can connect my battery connectors and then close the hatch. So now that battery, in theory, is in a watertight compartment um, that won't get flooded if I get waves that come over the top of the kayak. I don't really trust that 100%. I suspect that right now this hatch probably leaks a little bit, so I might get some drips that come down here. Um, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put some sort of a shield or a cover on the top of this battery that seals against this battery box and keeps any kind of splashing um, water from being able to get to any of the electrical connections. From the front of the kayak, there is a 10 gauge wire that comes down this left hand side and it comes to a waterproof box that I have that sits right in this area that houses the PWM controller. And that PWM controller box is right here. It has a bungee from the back of the box that wraps forward and wraps around this forward scupper that goes down uh, through the inside of the, the boat. Um, so that scupper gives a, a post that's on the inside. So I have a bungee that's wrapped around that post and it has a hook on it. And that hook attaches to a loop that's on this box. So if I need to take this box out of here, I can unhook this hook and hook it on this little uh, line that's on the inside of the kayak. And now I can take out this waterproof box. Um, and this box has the PWM controller on it and it has a couple of pen watertight penetrations on the bottom side. These are the power cables. One comes from the battery at the front of the kayak. The other one goes to the motor at the back of the kayak. The ethernet cable that comes out of here has eight conductors in it. And the reason I picked that size cable is because those eight conductors match up with a number of conductors that need to go to the dial potentiometer that adjusts the throttle and also the forward reverse and power off switch. Um, this box also has a display on it right here that gives you the percent of power that you're, that you're controlling to. When this is attached to the hook on the inside of the boat, grab that, grab the hook, hook it up to the box. This box gets pulled right up into this position so that's nice and secure. And when I'm sitting in the seat, I can look inside and see that the corner of that box is right underneath the opening and I can see that display. So if I want to, if I need to know the exact percentage, I can always flip this hatch up and look at it and see what it is. Um, under normal fishing conditions, you don't really need to see that. Um, the position of the knob on the box is enough. So normally when I'm fishing, this is closed and locked. And this is the controller that I made that houses the potentiometer knob that controls the percentage of power and the forward, off, and reverse switch. And that attaches right here to this connector that's coming out of the side of the kayak with the same kind of waterproof connection. So inside of here, there's a great big coil of ethernet cable so that um, if this box gets ruined and I want to replace it, um, actually, I, I would like to redesign something uh, more nifty that would sit here that would have like a throttle that, lever that would go back and forth. Um, I could just cut this off and then pull out a little bit more cable and then go from there. That's on and off. And then when this is vertical, it's at 50%. And then when it's in that position, it's at 100%. Um, and I've verified that by, by holding the box and watching the numbers on the inside. So now that I know that, I know that when the, when the line is up, um, I'm at 50% and then that's full power. And then, you know, going from there is, is good enough for when you're driving around. 
I usually, right now, I'm holding this in my lap or holding it in my left hand and just using my thumb to do um, my controlling. Uh, I will probably end up mounting this on the side of the kayak with some kind of a mount that goes to this rail. Um, that's another area for future development. Um, but for right now, it's operational. It works. This is a, a waterproof box. So the, the connections that are inside of here are completely water sealed. Um, but this potentiometer and this switch are not waterproof um, components. So eventually they're gonna get wet and they're gonna get ruined. And then at that time I'll replace them with waterproof ones unless I've already designed something different that um, has some sort of a throttle lever. All of the wiring on this kayak is all done with uh, 10 gauge wires and they terminate at Anderson power pole connectors. Uh, these are the, the connectors that we use on my robotics team. Um, they're held together with this little, this little locking pin um, and then they come apart real easy. Uh, they carry high current, they lock together like that. That was would lock in place. Now, I specifically decided to locate this PWM controller at the middle of the kayak after seeing a video which suggested very wisely that if this PWM controller were to burn out and you were out on the water, you would be dead. You'd have to paddle back unless you had access to these two wires. And if you do have access to these two wires, you can unplug your PWM out of the loop and take the battery cable and then the motor cable and directly connect these to each other and you would be able to run back to the boat ramp at full power and um, you wouldn't be able to control anything but at least you could get yourself back to the ramp this is the view looking down inside at the PWM controller box when I turn this on now it's on that's about half power there's full power. And then this would be reverse. To remove my battery, unplug the power, loosen up the strap, that, slide this forward pop it out over the strap and then it comes right out of the hatch.